Welcome, family, to the season three finale of the Good News Network. Greetings from Miami, Florida. My name is Luke Speckman. And I'm Brandon Speckman. And we are here today to share with you a recap of the month of June, a month brimming with incredible news from eight geographic world sectors. Today, we'll begin with a special announcement coming to you all the way from Los Angeles, California, and following, we'll update you on some monumental leadership transitions. Later comes another special announcement from our Latin America world sector, good news from around the world, and finally, we'll close out with a very special Mercy edition of our Day in the Life segment. And so, to get started, we'll turn it over to the World Sector Leader Couple for Administration and Law, Dr. Michael and Sharon Kirshner, for a very special announcement. Greetings, family, from over here in Los Angeles. We bring you an incredible report of the 2023 Spring Missions Contribution. For those who are newly baptized, Twice a year, our USA family of churches take up a special collection to plant new congregations, as well as to support churches and missionaries around the world. I'm so happy to announce that after months of sacrifice, hard work, and many prayers, our USA ICC congregations have given over $5 million for spring missions. This does not even count the monies raised for missions in our sister churches outside of America. We're seeing 2 Corinthians 9, 12 and 13 come alive in our day. This is the service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you've proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. We want to extend an enormous thank you to all the churches in America, as well as to those around the globe who gave missions and for your unmatched generosity. Your love for God and people is so evident in your hearts to joyfully sacrifice financially. And this gift will make an eternal difference because it will help more and more churches be planted thus saving and healing so many more souls. We love you so much, family. Thank you once again for an outstanding spring missions and to God be all the glory. Thank you so much, Michael and Sharon, for that awesome report. And now we'll share with you some very exciting transitions starting in our new home of the Miami Church. Just a month ago, after almost a year of serving the amazing New Delhi Church, the Spirit has blown Brandon and me to the beautiful Miami International Christian Church. So in our place to oversee South Asia from New Delhi, the Lord has sent the esteemed couple, Drs. Ricky and Colleen Chalinor. God has used Ricky and Co. so powerfully in the past four years as he worked through their leadership to multiply the Southeast Asia churches from just 200 disciples in two churches to now 850 disciples in seven congregations. On July 7th, the Chalinors officially moved from Manila, Philippines to New Delhi, India to take up the mantle of leadership for South Asia, a geographic charge of eight nations and 1.8 billion lost souls. Going along with the Chalinors from Manila to India are dear partners in the gospel, Sean and Crystal O'Connor and Clifford and Jazz Ablin. Indeed, Brandon and I are so grateful to you, Ricky and Co, and excited for the many miracles to come in South Asia, especially in the largest nation in the history of the world, India, with 1.4 billion people. Absolutely. As most of you are well aware, the goal of the missionary is to raise up nationals to lead in their place. As the Chalinor's missionary work in Southeast Asia comes to completion, they leave behind a powerful Filipino leadership team. In the Chalinor's role of the geographic sector leaders of Southeast Asia will be their best friends, Mark and Micah Carbonell. The Carbonells are Filipino nationals baptized in the Kirshner's Bible Talk in Los Angeles and who were on the original Manila mission team in 2015. The Carbonells have already moved from Dubai to Manila to oversee all of the Southeast Asia churches. And Zach and Ariel Shields, also raised up by the Chalinors, have moved from Manila to lead the Dubai church and to oversee the work in the Arab Gulf nations. In the promised land world sector, the dynamic Jordan and Alyssa Swan, previously working by Brandon and my side in New Delhi, have returned to the States to assume leadership of the Boston church. Also, Ameka and Lucia Amogu are honored to now lead the Casco Bay Church in Portland, Maine. Congratulations to all family, and please keep all these thrilling changes in your prayers. And now for another special announcement coming to you from Mexico City, Mexico. Saludos desde la Ciudad de México. Greetings from Mexico City. We're so excited as a church to host the Latin American Missions Conference, which will be entitled Sin Limites, which means limitless, because God has no limits. However, the festivities will begin a week prior 
on Sunday, July 23rd with the Ignite Team Service, which will be amazing. That very Sunday night, the Crown Authority Leadership Council sessions will begin. From the 26th to the 28th, we will have ICLS, International Campus Leadership Seminar, which will be entitled, Filled with Awe. Then, from the 28th to the 30th, we'll have the Latin American Missions Conference, which is gonna finish with a soccer tournament that very night. Now I'll pass it over to Linda. Yes, yes. Along with all of that, Lord willing, yes. we'll witness the 11th ICCM Global Commencement Ceremony and the send-off of the Quito Ecuador Mission Team. So get your passports and your visas ready to join us in just a couple of weeks. We love you very much. We can't wait to have you. Nos vemos. Thanks, Dr. Raul and Linda Moreno. We can't wait to see you there. And speaking of international missions conferences, this past June ushered in three exceptional conferences, which we'll spotlight as we move into good news from around the world. In these three conferences, hundreds of disciples were able to participate. Starting at the beginning of June, we had the historic first French Africa missions conference in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. The exciting theme was Fema Vorta Glory in English, show me your glory. Thursday night, June 1st, 100 leaders gathered for the speaker's dinner at Hotel Ivatel in downtown Abidjan with Blaise Fumba expertly preaching on the impact of God's glory. Friday was a church builder's workshop, a time filled with inspirational lessons delivered by heroes in the faith such as doctors Matt and Helen Sullivan of Miami and evangelist Mickey Ngungu of Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo. Saturday was their Mercy Day, where the disciples had the opportunity to visit an orphanage with 71 abandoned children for a time of bonding through games and generously providing food items and hygienic supplies. During this unforgettable weekend, five couples were appointed as evangelists and women's ministry leaders. And get this, on Sunday morning, the disciples had a glorious attendance of 1,161 people. Not only were the missions conference delegates blessed to hear the singing prayers and preaching, but they witnessed God blessing the extraordinary faith and hard work of the French Africa disciples with 36 baptisms and two restorations. The service concluded with the Holy Spirit sending out three mission teams, Cotonou Benin, Lubumbashi DRC, and Tana Madagascar. For the English speaking nations over in Lagos, Nigeria at the end of June was the African Missions Conference as well entitled, Show Me Your Glory. And with 311 souls in attendance, they had an action-packed weekend. There was everything from hiking and their annual football competition to joyous worship, serving at the Real Mercy School and the 2023 Africanus International College of Christian Ministries commencement ceremony. Not to mention, they closed the weekend with two moving baptisms, a restoration, and the sending off of mission teams to Accra, Ghana, as well as to Lusaka, Zambia, and Nairobi, Kenya. Of special note, the Accra mission team is led by Ghanaian national Kweku Sarkodie, who was baptized by Dr. Kip McKean in Portland as a student at Reed College. Trained by Dr. Jason Dimitri in San Francisco, and only one month ago received his American citizenship. However, in paraphrasing Hebrews 11, 25 to 26, by faith, Kwaku chose for his American wife, Ashley, his daughter, Ama, and himself to be mistreated along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the pleasures of America. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of America because Kwaku and his family were looking ahead to their reward. Kwaku is an example of faith for nationals everywhere. That was incredible. Six church plantings in Africa this summer. Also in the month of June was the electrifying Pacific Rim Missions Conference entitled Stand in Awe. This was hosted in one of the most renowned conference centers in the Philippines, the Philippine International Convention Center. Disciples left buzzing from this weekend of stirring lessons, lively fellowship, kingdom appointments, eight baptisms, and the victorious send-off of the Bangkok Thailand Mission Team. Let's take a look. Amen. Let's give it up for the Bangkok Thailand mission team. Amen. And uh, I do want to just lift up Vladi and Cello. They planted the church in Phnom Penh. Now Bangkok, they are being instrumental and chosen by God to evangelize the entire Southeast Asia Peninsula. And so what we're going to do is, as in Acts 13, Nick Bordieri and... Tony Angelon will be praying as we send them out. It's heartwarming to see the lasting impact of these conferences on the disciples who have the opportunity to attend. Without a doubt, the memories and the spiritual training gained at these conferences are priceless. 
Thank you to all of the directors and coordinators who banded together to make them so impacting. In other news, over in the Latin America world sector, the Sao Paulo Brazil Church hosted their Women's Day, I Am Her. The 160 women of the Brazil Church welcomed an attendance of almost 300 women. And so, after exhilarating theatrical and musical performances and heartfelt testimonies, Linda Moreno, the Women Latin America World Sector leader, preached about Mary of Bethany and how Jesus exalted her because of what she had done for him and how he desires to exalt all of his daughters as well because of our dedication to Christ. Following that, God truly exalted the Sao Paulo Women's Ministry for their zeal and their love for the lost as they close out with six baptisms and three restorations. Congratulations, Sao Paulo sisters. And also now in the Latin American world sector, we have the City of Angels Church in Los Angeles, California, which just celebrated its 16th anniversary on June 4th. What's most praiseworthy about the Jerusalem Church of the Movement is their faithfulness, raising up leaders, and their sending out scores of disciples and mission teams worldwide throughout the years. In fact, just in the past two months, this congregation has sent out 42 disciples on mission teams and supplemental mission teams to Lincoln, Nebraska, Denver, Colorado, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, Maui, Hawaii, Kona, Hawaii, Port of Spain, Trinidad, and Bangkok, Thailand. Nonetheless, even after sending out 42 disciples in the last two months, God has given them explosive growth and now stand 960 disciples strong and have already had 282 additions in the first 180 days of 2023. That's 237 baptisms and 45 restorations. All of this, and they collected well over $1 million for special missions contribution. The lamp of our Jerusalem church blazes brightly, and we stand in awe of all that God has done and continues to do in the city of angels. Another exciting development in the Sages World sector is again in the Caribbean nation of Cuba. Having planted the Guantanamo Cuba ICC last year, Jared and Rachel McGee, the Tampa Bay church leaders, flew to Santiago, Cuba, and were met by the Guantanamo church leaders, Aramis and Ladies, as well as Guantanamo disciples Alejandro, Alfredo, and Rosie. The mainline Church of Christ preacher and his wife, Luis and Isabel Morales, heard about all the baptisms in the ICC in Guantanamo, and so they became very interested in joining the movement. After several days of studying the Bible, six were baptized on Sunday, June 18th, two of which were Luis and Isabel, who now lead the Santiago ICC Remnant Group. Welcome to the family, Luis and Isabel. Now over in our European world sector in Berlin, Germany, we have the story of Daniel. Daniel, a business development engineering graduate, had moved from India to Germany to study and acquire success. However, he felt purposeless and desired something more. Well, God saw this desire and used Devon, Berlin's first campus baptism, to reach out to him. And so, after studying the Bible, Daniel was baptized, embracing God's purpose for his life to save many more souls for Christ. Welcome to the family, Daniel. And down under in the Austral China world sector, Raymond, originally from Taiwan, was baptized when he came to Australia in February 2023. Following the Austral China Missions Conference in April, he was so profoundly impacted meeting the Taiwanese and Chinese disciples that after merely four months of being a disciple, he personally made the decision to put on hold his university and return to Taiwan to help save his people. Shifting over to the Northern Federation, we have the heartwarming testimony of Stacy in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Stacy's daughter, Maddie, is a disciple who was recently sent out of Minneapolis to join the church in Sydney. Her mother, Stacy, came to church for the very first time at the Minneapolis Women's Day in March. Stacy then began studying the Bible and making miraculous transformations. As a result, her daughter Maddie flew in all the way from Sydney to surprise her mother arriving right before Sunday's worship service. Maddie later asked for her mom's good confession and baptized her in the lake Maddie grew up going to as a kid. What an absolute joy it is to see families united in Christ. Congratulations, Stacy and Maddie. This GNN episode, we will not have the usual day in the life segment featuring one outstanding disciple. Instead, we will hear from Mercy World Sector leaders, Nick and Denise Bordieri, who will share about the almost 11,000 sold out movement disciples around the world who are also Mercy ambassadors on the Day of Mercy. Most of us served on June 10th, but a few congregations scheduled their Days of Mercy a week before or a week later. And now, a day in the life. The heart of Jesus is to, to serve people, to connect with people, to love people. Meet their needs. In the way in which, yeah, they, they want to, they need to be met. 
and Mercy provides that opportunity because we'll go out into communities and meet those needs for that community. And our focus is on, this year our focus has been the youth. UNICEF did a study, United Nations, United Nations International Children's Fund. 1.8 trillion hours were lost due to the, the pandemic, kids' education, which affected their, their socialization and their mental health. So for Mercy, empowering children through play is just the beginning. We want to continue to, to help these children around the world. They're our future. We can evangelize the world, we can go and share our faith. We need to take care of people. We're taking care of people spiritually, but there's one quote, quote from Carver Boudot. He said, people aren't gonna hear the word of God if they're starving. And to know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. This is our 14th annual International Day of Mercy. We've uh, been able to serve on every single uh, populated continent. And so we had projects around the world. For example, in Haiti, uh, they did a cleanup day where they went in, they're planting trees uh, because it's a defore deforested area. And they want to continue to do that uh, throughout the year. We currently have 62 children in the school. We hope to grow that next, next year to 85 children. In Brazil, in Sao Paulo, they had a project for children, 270 children, uh, a day of mercy for these children where they played, they had face painting, it was like a carnival uh, for children in a favela. A favela is a very poor community. They talked about how they feel secure when the mercy ambassadors come. And then we went to Johannesburg for their day of mercy mm -hmm. and there was uh, 100 children in another school. Um, so the kids would just circle around and then they decided that they wanted to sing us songs and just their their excitement to be able to be able to sing to us and sing with each other it was a really special time for us the board members uh, for the school and the principal all attended and they were just uh, overwhelmed with joy and appreciation for all that we did. So they said their, their kids don't have this opportunity. They don't see the love and kindness of people like this, uh, like you, the Mercy Ambassadors. And they asked us if we can do a project on a regular basis. And the mm -hmm. principal said, I would like to come to church and visit, uh, as well as one of the board members. And then we went to Lagos for the uh, African Missions Conference, where we were at the uh, Real Mercy School. So we decided to bus in the disciples to be able to go and visit the school. Uh, the disciples were there playing. Uh, we played Scrabble. We played Hopscotch. Uh, there was a little swimming pool for the kids to put their feet in. And uh, we also sang songs, and then we, we had a meal. Principal was the headmaster was saying, who's now a disciple, because of the School and Mercy projects, um, he and his wife said the kids were falling asleep. Um, they couldn't study. And this is a very poor area of, of Lagos. Now the children have a meal every single day, maybe their only meal they have for, throughout the day. And they're alert, they're going to school, they're studying. Samoa, kids are learning how to prepare the land, plant, plant uh, seedlings to grow. So they did that. Uh, for the community. And that was their day of mercy. Then they gathered them all together, they had some lessons, and then they fed them. Uh, it was just a festive day for these children that don't, don't go to school, they're on the streets, uh, a wonderful opportunity for them. And uh, the community center is gonna take, cater to these children going forward and have classes on a daily basis. And it's really interesting too, because you see when we walk in in our green shirts, their eyes light up like, who are they? <laughs> and then we start interacting with them, singing, playing, and they just love it. They're gonna influence not only themselves, but their families and their communities, and hopefully their country in the future. So perfectly, these kids will go out and pay it forward. Thank you so much, Nick and Denise Bordieri, the Mercy World Sector Leaders, and your leadership team of Mercy Directors around the globe for so many incredible projects and programs. Now, some of you may remember in season two, the unforgettable baptism of Joseph Nelson Sr., the father of Joseph Nelson. He was baptized at 105 years old after 30 years of his son walking with God and praying for him to one day become a baptized disciple. And also impossible to forget is how God answered Kip's 
50-year prayer for his then 93-year-old mother to be baptized this past year. Well, God continues to show that we should always pray and never give up on our families. In the Tampa Bay Church, Jeannie McGee, a faithful disciple of 45 years, was able to baptize her 75-year-old eldest sister, Maureen. Let's watch this inspirational miracle. What is your good confession? That Jesus is the Lord. Grab your ready. One, two, Wow, it is just so moving to see such an incredible transformation of heart. 2023 truly continues to be a year of miracles. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode of GNN. Please share it with your family and friends to further spread the news of God's incredible modern day miracles happening worldwide. This is Luke and Brandon Speckman reporting to you from the Good News Network. The best news you'll ever see.